Hey there. I keep trying to make this video, but these annoying bubbles keep popping up everywhere. If you see them, could you do me a favor and pop them? I appreciate it. SpongeBob Season 9 was an interesting time for the series. It ran from 2012 to 2017, giving us popular episodes such as Plankton's Pet, SpongeBob You're Fired, Mall Girl Pearl, and Goodbye Krabby Patty. I enjoyed most of them, and I think there's a lot to appreciate about this season. It had a good few specials, and they all received a considerable amount of marketing. One of these specials was called It Came From Goo Lagoon, which inspired an online game that helped promote it. The game actually tied into the episode in a very interesting way, but we'll get to that in a moment. The episode revolves around mysterious goo bubbles that come out of Goo Lagoon. The Bikini Bottom citizens think they're cool and mess around with them, but Sandy insists they're dangerous and capable of covering Bikini Bottom in a big giant mess. Eventually, Plankton uses the goo for his own nefarious purposes and threatens to burst a giant conglomeration of goo if Mr. Krabs doesn't give him the Krabby Patty formula. From an entertainment standpoint, I found this really enjoyable. A lot of the jokes were really funny and it was amusing to watch. The story was okay, but I have to wonder why they spent a portion of the episode trying to convince Plankton to not burst the bubble, only for him to do it anyway even after they give him the formula. It seems like they would have reached that conclusion no matter what they did. Bubble Bruiser gave his life for nothing. A moment of silence, please. But there's another interesting fact about this episode. The Nick.com Flash game, The Goo from Goo Lagoon, was not only made to promote it, but also to be played in tandem with it during a designated air date. Let's check it out for ourselves and see how it is. Firstly, I have to mention it's very grim atmosphere. Everything's so dark and the music is kind of mystical. Up here, it refers to the special as Spongebob vs. the Goo. While this wasn't the name of the episode, it was the name of the event leading up to it where several beach-themed episodes aired to build anticipation for it at 7pm, just before the premiere of Breadwinners. They always gave these events their own names, and I would always confuse them for the actual episode titles. Have you seen the snail was Where's Gary? Whatever happened to Spongebob was Who Bob What Pants? Dunces and Dragons was Lost in Time, etc. I just always used to assume they had a bad habit of changing their minds about episode titles at the last minute. So if you tuned in at the right time, you would play this game where you'd pop a bubble whenever a character said the word goo. You would eventually end up popping 30 bubbles, but I found this a little confusing. Would words like gooey count? They said that a few times. I can only imagine how frustrating it must have been for people who took the time to do this and ended up missing one or two. If you were able to do it, you would unlock a secret Patrick stage, but let's look at the regular game first. In the story, something sinister has tainted the goo from Goo Lagoon, and it's attacking Bikini Bottom. To set right? What does that mean? Is the game glit- oh, it was leading into the next scene. So Spongebob boards a tiny submarine, and Sandy sends him into the ocean to find the source of the tainted goo. That is, the Goo Lagoon Ocean. The more oceany ocean than the one the show's in. At a level select screen, you choose which stage to try out. Then we're thrown into the gameplay. Sandy talks over a radio and tells us what everything does. You have to reach the big green shiny glob of goo to make it to the next stage. But while you're out there, you can collect these bubbles to unlock memories. It seems like a strange choice here, since memories didn't really have anything to do with it came from Goo Lagoon. But hey, this game took at least a few liberties with the story. I actually kind of like the atmosphere, and the art style is admittedly really pretty. Just look at those backgrounds. Though it is kind of weird seeing Spongebob make this one expression the entire time. And I do have to mention how you control your submarine. You click a certain spot on the screen, and Spongebob will move in the general direction you clicked in. The submarine is floaty, and the controls take some getting used to. Because you're drifting along, it's easy to crash into things. You have a limited amount of fuel and you lose some whenever you take damage. It also gradually declines over time. If you run out, you start over. Now I've played a lot of games with a similar format to this. One that comes to mind is the Biosphere stage from Jumpstart 3rd Grade. A big difference though is that that one used the arrow keys. I feel like this game really wants to use the arrow keys, but somewhere along the line they decided to make it mouse controlled instead. It makes it more challenging, sure, but I'm not sure if it's an intentional challenge. The stages can be tough to figure out as is. Since you also have to click and drag to keep Spongebob moving, you have to be careful not to drag the mouse out of the game screen. Some of the early obstacles you encounter are vents that push you a certain way, and walls of goo that can only be passed through if you collect goo of the same color. You can also hit switches that turn certain vents on or off. There's also goo that softens your landing or sticks you to it if you run into a wall it's on. 
Also watch out for the killer jellyfish. Even when puzzles are easy to figure out, it can be difficult to navigate them. You'll probably crash into walls at least a few times every round because of how much your submarine drifts. I mean, it's probably realistic. I've never tried to navigate a submarine through an undersea maze before. I plan to keep it that way for at least another year or two. Then we eventually reach our first boss fight. Oh, you didn't expect there to be bosses in this? Well, get ready, because these things can be real pains to fight against. Our first one is a giant jellyfish surrounded by smaller ones. You wait until there's an opening, then you dive into it to attack. You do have to have a bit of momentum in order to do damage, and unfortunately, it's really easy to be hit by a jellyfish right after landing an attack. Careful not to go beneath the vents either, it'll be too much of a hassle to get back up. This can be really challenging, but it's only the first boss, so it only gets harder from here. The stages get a lot harder too. We now have to worry about these spiked balls that are nearly impossible to avoid. And the puzzles get a lot more complex and harder to figure out. You better put your brain to work if you want to beat this. The next boss is an anglerfish, and I really like this because you don't often see deep sea fish in Spongebob. It's not like he likes to visit rock bottom very often. This is the first stage to have fuel as a collectible item, but the setup of this fight is really weird. You have to shoot a spiked ball directly at the angler's light. To do this, you roll into one of these crevices and hit a switch at just the right time to launch it when the angler is in position. Unfortunately, this requires a lot of waiting, so your fuel is going to drain the entire time. You can go back up to get more, but you aren't very fast, and it doesn't fill very much. If the angler hits you or you run into a wall, you'll lose it anyway and make all the effort meaningless. Wow, it really is like the episode, isn't it? For some reason, at the start of the stage, I always take damage and I can't figure out why. This isn't a good level to force health loss on the player, you need every inch of it to win. Also, after you manage to hit the angler, it gets a sudden burst of speed before going back to its usual pace. Hopefully you don't have to go out and get fuel while it's doing this. I did a few times and it was not pretty. When you beat it, it's extremely satisfying, but then we're introduced to my least favorite feature in this entire thing. In the later stages, you often have to float into this anemone that launches you to your goal. You have to control where it shoots you, but most of the time it either doesn't throw you fast enough for you to pass through a barrier, or something hits you while you're flying. It's very hard to get the hang of. The next boss is a giant lobster like Larry. Oh, please let me eat the forbidden honey. Anti-Larry rises out of one of three spots on the floor, so you have to launch yourself at him with the anem- With the anem- With the anemone. Also, rest in peace, giant Spongebob. It gets extremely hard when he pops up underneath a platform. You have to have some sick ricochet skills to land a hit. Then once you get past him, we find a few black holes. Hey, we mentioned Jumpstart earlier. Maybe we'll find a clue in one of them. Nah, they just teleport you somewhere else on the map. This leads to some interesting puzzles where you have to move through the right black holes to wind up in the right place, but they only appear toward the end so you don't use them very often. They are fun to navigate though. The last few stages aren't that hard actually, but then we're faced with Cthulhu himself as the final boss. I mean, that's totally who he's supposed to be, just look at him. There is actually an official Spongebob game where you fight Cthulhu. Would you have ever imagined such a thing? His fight is extremely annoying because you hit switches to launch these boulders, but then they drift away and you have to hit them into a tunnel so they can be fired at the boss. It's really easy to bump into them and send them in the wrong direction. It'll probably take a few tries to land one, so you'll likely use up all your fuel. It's also easy to drift in the way of the boulder, which will block it when it's shot out. Thankfully, he doesn't take too many hits, so once you beat him, you win the game. And it crashed. Gotta love trying to run old software. The only thing left to check out is the bonus stage we get for beating the bubble challenge. Let's see how it is. A very happy Patrick is floating in a bubble and you have to send him through an obstacle course so you can reach him. I guess this is kinda like that scene from the episode where Patrick floats away on the goo bubble, but that feels like a stretch. By the way, the toilet paper punchline got a good chuckle out of me. And I don't really think this was trying to emulate the episode either. It feels like it was trying to be its own thing. As for this stage, it's fine, but kinda shortened to the point. I would have expected a little more if I had to look at a computer screen the entire time I was trying to watch a special Spongebob episode. Episode, but this is a fairly basic game, so I don't know how much more they could have added. Mostly, this is something you can play if you want to challenge yourself. The first stages are easy, but the later ones can really test your frustration levels. It's difficult, but you can have fun with it and really appreciate the environment it created. And that concludes the Goo from Goo Lagoon. But there's one other thing we still have to cover. Did you notice all the bubbles coming up at random points in the video? I'm going to trust that you did your part and popped them for me. If you managed to pop all of them, congratulations, you have unlocked the secret part of the video. If you didn't, then, uh, this is all you see. 
You're lying if you say otherwise. So for this super secret section of the video, for only the biggest bubble bursters, let's look at another game based on Goo Lagoon. This one is called Goo Lagoon Surfing Showdown. You select either Spongebob or Patrick to face off in a surfing competition. You choose three moves to perform, then you get a rhythm game where you hit the right arrow key when it reaches the line. Now I usually suck at rhythm games, I'll never forget the impossible one from Do You Believe X. Human fingers just don't move like that. But this is fairly easy, though it is kinda hard to tell when the best time to hit the key is. It's also confusing at the end when it tells you to hit the up arrow while the key on the screen is completely different. This is really straightforward, so let's check out another slightly more complex Goo Lagoon game. This is the Race to Goo Lagoon. Once again, you select either Spongebob or Patrick, then you play a sort of two-player version of Nickelodeon Block Party. You spin a wheel, move a designated number of spaces, then something happens that correlates with the space you land on. Jellyfish can sting you, you can bounce forward, you can send your opponent back a few spaces, or you can play a mini-game. My favorite is this one where you eat Krabby Patties on a conveyor belt that's constantly moving. You mash the mouse button to eat more of it. It's oddly amusing. Unfortunately, it's easy to accidentally skip the instructions when the menus first appear, so in games like this one, I didn't see what I was supposed to be doing. Most of them are easy to understand, though, like this one where you catch jellyfish or this one where you hit balls with your hands. It's very short and sweet, but still a nice way to kill some time. If you want a more complex version of this, check out the Block Party series or any of the Sarbakan board game adaptations. This one was made by Smashing Ideas. They made their share of Nickelodeon games, but sadly, they aren't around anymore. So that wraps things up for our little Goo Lagoon adventure. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any game suggestions, be sure to comment them below and maybe we'll check them out in the future. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.